Hey guys, at present, the history of the emergence of women's soccer is quite interesting and popular. The very idea of the emergence and active spread of such a sport is not new. To make sure of this, it is necessary to turn to the origins of this history. But before we start subscribe to our channel, put a like and post the video in social networks. Next we will tell, the history of the emergence and development of women's soccer. The very first mention of women's soccer can be seen in China about 2,000 years ago on frescoes. Also later it was there that began the pursuit of this sport in order to oppress and ban it. In Europe in the 20th century found like-minded rulers of China. Such oppression reached the stage when the soccer associations of Holland, Germany and England put forward their announcement to ban women's soccer, announcing that it is illegal. The sport was classified as a men's sport until 1970. However, there are also references in the history of soccer specifically as a women's sport. For example, at the end of the 17th century in one of the cities of Scotland, a match was held in which married women opposed unmarried women. From here, the background to the abolition of women's soccer began to emerge. First, on social grounds, soccer in the traditional sense does not conform to the standard view of women. Second, on medical grounds, it is harmful to women. Third, the scale and spectacle of women's soccer is largely inferior to men's soccer. But over a long period of time, opinion on this has changed. Therefore, in Sweden, Norway, Italy, the United States and Germany, women's soccer later received its well-deserved vocation. Women began to be interested in soccer almost simultaneously with men in the second half of the 19th century. In one of the issues of Harper's Bazaar magazine for 1869 you can find a picture of four girls in skirts and shoes with small heels playing soccer. The magazine portrayed soccer as fun, but as early as 1894, the first women's soccer club, British Ladies, appeared in England. Its founder, women's equality activist Nellie Hudson said in an interview that she organized the team with the firm intention of proving to the world that women are not just useless decorative creatures, as men try to present them as. A British newspaper wrote in those years, It must be clear that the girls are completely unfit for hard work on the soccer field. Such public entertainment is to be despised. But soon it turned out that women's soccer deserves not contempt, but only respect, and it became clear during the First World War. This table a kind of push women's soccer at this time. It was in the years of hardship he acquired in Foggy Albion mass character. It turned out as follows. In 1915-16, Many teenage girls, 14-15 years old, were forced to leave home and get a job in military factories. They plunged into an unfamiliar world of grueling labor and harsh discipline. At such a tender and also transitional age, this was fraught with a serious psychological breakdown, and the Ministry of Military Industry created a health and welfare department specifically for this category of female workers. The organization of leisure time became one of its most important components. Amazingly, the third most common form of leisure after dancing and swimming was a crude male game, soccer. Girls took great pleasure in kicking the leather ball and literally filled the soccer fields left in disrepair by the men who had gone off to fight. In late December 1920, a couple of days after Christmas, an unprecedented crowd of about 53,000 spectators gathered at Goodison Park Stadium in Liverpool. A few thousand more people, who did not have enough seats in the stands, stayed behind the gates. The occasion was not a match Everton this is the soccer club since the end of the 19th century played at Goodison Park and the game between two women's teams Dick, Kerr Ladies and St. Helens Ladies. The record for attendance at a women's soccer match set then held throughout the 20th century and was only broken in 2012 in London, when Great Britain and Brazil met in the Olympic tournament. One of the most famous in the history of women's soccer teams Dick, Kerr Ladies appeared in 1917 in Lancashire. From practicing between jobs, English female soccer players quickly moved on to full matches. And the love of gawkers, flocking to the matches in droves, decided to use it for the good of the country the money raised from ticket sales was sent to the army. Dick, Kerr ladies in general opened a lot of things in women's soccer. They were among the first to play as men in short shorts and long-sleeved shirts. At the turn of the century, women appeared on the field in wide shorts just below the knees and sports blouses no exposed body parts in sight. They also played the first international match against France in 1920 and even toured North America. 
The British football campaign banned women from soccer from playing in leagues in 1921. Thus, women's soccer did not develop for about 40 years. And also Germany and Holland picked up the ideas of the ban in the 1950s. The National Amateur Women's Soccer Association gathered the Italian Women's League under its control by the early 1970s. A new round of development of women's soccer happened after the end of World War II and the associated surge of the feminist movement. In 1957, the International Women's Football Association was organized, and in 1966 the first unofficial World Cup was held in England. FIFA, UEFA and other official soccer associations ignored it, but in the early 1970s women's soccer leagues sprang up in a couple dozen countries, including France, Italy, Germany and England. In 1970 and 1971, the Women's Soccer Association held two more unofficial world championships, in Italy and Mexico. England is the ancestor of soccer, both men's and women's. Back in the 19th century, there was a women's soccer team called the British Ladies Football Club. As mentioned in the history, the year of establishment of this club is 1895. It is the one that is the first club of women's soccer. In March 1895, the first women's soccer match was recorded. Against each other competed women of England, divided on the territorial principle, North versus South. A clear advantage had the Northerners, snatching victory from their rivals with a score of 7-1. to one. This club enjoyed a certain fame, because they collected large stadiums of spectators, who with great interest came to cheer for their favorite team. This match was organized by one of the representatives of the middle class Miss Nettie Honeyball, who was also a feminist and educated woman. Before the match, advertisements had been circulated inviting women to play soccer. There were some shortcomings during the game. For example, after the first half the teams did not exchange goals, sometimes some rules were forgotten, but we can say that in general the game was good. Unfortunately, women's soccer did not take root then, it did not attract crowds of spectators. Matches of women's teams are too hot to be refereed by men this was the conclusion of the Football Association of the English County of Derbyshire. Members of the Society of Soccer Referees categorically refused to participate in women's matches, saying that it is simply impossible to talk over soccer players. In addition, they are terribly flirtatious when awarding penalties. And the hardest part is when penalties are awarded, the victims often start crying. Secretary of the Referees Society F. Harwood added that the vocabulary of female players during the game is not much different from the salty language of the minors' teams. Mary White, a 42-year-old Englishwoman, taking an exam to become a soccer referee, when asked about her refereeing experiences said, My own husband gives me more trouble than 22 men on a soccer field. These and other events have caused FIFA's governing body to question its hitherto intransigent stance. It organized a survey among national federations on the question, should women's soccer be officially recognized? The response from the federations was strongly negative, and FIFA once again plunged into a wait-and-see state. Meanwhile, women's soccer continued to gain momentum. It progressed especially rapidly in the Scandinavian countries, as well as in Germany. In the first half of the 80s calls for its recognition in the official order began to be heard more and more persistently. The ice was finally broken in 1986, when FIFA established a women's soccer committee. However, for a while there was only one woman on the committee. Since there are different points of view about women's soccer, and especially a lot of skeptics from the male side, it is possible to identify a certain number of minuses and pros of women's soccer. One of the main disadvantages is the high risk of injury. Soccer involves a certain physical preparation and requires certain specific loads. In order for women to be able to withstand such loads, requires qualified and experienced coaches who could individually approach each participant and develop a specific set of exercises. The complex of sports activities should allow girls to quickly adapt to a new sport, because many come from another sport, for example, such athletics. Another disadvantage is the opinion that women's soccer is less spectacular than men's soccer. There is less fighting on the field, and also men are superior to girls in speed. The third disadvantage is the funding of women's soccer. Since it greatly affects the spectator interest, as well as the quality of the game itself. But, on the other hand, a positive moment in this matter can serve as a positive devotion to the sport, because money is on the back burner. But gradually in society begins to lay the opinion that women's soccer is safe, useful and even has a hardening character. The positive sides can be attributed to the development of the following skills. 
responsibility, endurance, wit, calculation, attention, concentration, team spirit, not to mention the strengthening of immunity through physical exertion. A lot of changes underwent women's soccer in the world for a long time of its formation as an official sport. So, for example, the sphere of financing. At the moment, the prize money for the World Cup has doubled. In Denmark, New Zealand and Norway, men's and women's teams already receive the same prize money, while other countries are still striving for such a leap. On the Euro arena, British teams are behind German and French teams. However, the Brits have reached the semi-finals in the last nine seasons. And also at the end of March, a £10 million English Super League sponsorship deal was signed with Barclays. The number of spectators willing to watch a match for the fairer half of humanity is also growing. In the Netherlands, for example, the number of fans reaches approximately 20,000, although 10 years ago the total number of spectators was 1,500. The number of spectators was an absolute record for the last months of the games. 39,000 people came to support their teams at the match between Juventus and Fiorentina. 49,000 spectators could be seen at the Athletic Atletico match, and 60,000 spectators attended Barcelona's game against Atletico. The model of the uniforms in which the women play has also changed. The shorts have become shorter and the shirts are no longer so loose. For the first time in the history of women's soccer around the world, Nike approached individually to each country that participates in the World Cup, for each was designed its own distinctive uniform. Currently in the United States there are about 300 educational institutions that teach soccer players professional game. And their students are not only locals, but also girls from all over the world. More than 8 million girls and women are engaged in amateur or professional soccer in the modern world. Thanks to high training in specialized educational institutions, Americans were able to gather a strong national women's team. They were prepared to such a level that they were able to take first place already in the official women's world championship. In 120 countries women's soccer continues to develop to this day. Since 2003, there is a major struggle between Germany and the United States for supremacy in this particular sport. And how do you think who will win this World Cup? Leave your comments. Guys, if you liked our video, but you haven't subscribed to us yet, subscribe right now and post the video in social networks, there will be a lot of interesting things in the next episodes. See you soon. Bye.